Hi and welcome in 3.13 almost max possible IIQ standard leak ice shot magic find build. I have finally bought a new PC so I can now do 100% delirious maps without lagging. They are a bit harder than normal maps so I'm currently farming low tier ones. The build still needs some more damage to be able to do tier 14 plus delirious maps solo. For those who follow my build guide, here are the main changes compared to the previous version. It uses three large cluster jewels now, so the skill tree has changed a lot. It uses some of the alternate quality gems introduced in 3.12 patch. Movement skill was changed to dash from blink arrow. Power charges generation source was changed from Herald of Ice plus Curse on Hit to Storm Rider passive on the cluster jewels, because Curse on Hit has changed its name for Hextouch and it cannot apply Assassin's Mark anymore. Here are the IIQ and IIR values. My current item quantity percentage values are 203 flat and 51 temporary from Wind Reaper and Divination Distillate bonuses, which gives a total number of 254. Max possible values are 219 flat plus 52 temporary, which is 271 in total, so I miss 17%. I had a lucky amulet syndicate craft, which gave me 29 IIQ talisman, so now technically I can have a 1% of the maximum possible IQ in the game. I only don't have one of the two 5% increased effect of Flask passive, which would give additional 1% of IQ from Flask effect, and I can allocate it anytime, and I don't use the 15% IQ string of Servitude belt, which is the max for the belt slot, and I have it, but I prefer Headhunter. This is a gear that I currently use. Bow is a legacy Wind Reaper, if you wanna farm higher tier Delirious maps, you should consider replacing it with a good rare bow instead. Quiver is a perfectly rolled recall squills with point blank corrupted implicit mod, it's good mainly because of the fork bonus. Point blank corrupted implicit mod lets me free one skill tree point from the point blank notable. In future I plan to replace it for a good rare quiver. Helmet is a rare lion pelt with 20% quant and a lot of life, which is very important in this kind of builds, so you don't die all the time, since it's hard to make a tanky magic find build. Armor is the Greed's Embrace chest, which is the only body armor that gives 15% quantity and it also gives 50% item rarity. I have 50% increased damage corrupted implicit mod on it, which is better than plus 1 to all gem levels because it affects both mapping and single target skills as well as all the other skills that I use. Gloves are the legacy unique Sadima touch gloves with maximum 24% quantity possible on this item slot. Good option is to mirror a 20% IQ rare gloves which are much stronger but then you lose 4% quant. Best enchant is of Fury, it's very good for bow builds but right now I use a pair without any enchant because projectiles from enchant attacks cannot be supported by IQ gem so I would lose a tiny amount of IQ, so currently I prefer a bit less damage in favor of a bit more effective IQ. Boots are the legacy unique Goldwyn boots, which give 30% IQ and it's the max possible value on this slot. It's the same situation as with gloves, you can get rare ones with 20% quantity and you get more life, movement speed and damage, but it would also sacrifice 10% of IQ. Because of the fact that they grant only 10% movement speed, the enchant is also the 10% movement speed to be a bit faster. I have finally crafted a spine fused talisman with IQ corruption implicit mod and now I have 29% IQ on this slot which is only 1% of the maximum on this slot. This 1% here is actually the only 1% that I miss to be able to achieve max possible quantity in the game from the items that I have. I would only have to replace my headhunter with the string of servitude 15% IQ belt. The anoint is constitution for more life and the catalyst choice here as well as for the other jewelry is the fertile ones also for more life. Rings are rare ones with maximum 20% IQ for this slot and tier 1 life mods. In future I'd like to mirror some good 20% IQ rings. Belt is a headhunter because it's the most enjoyable and crazy item in this game and it gives a lot of fun. This is the only item slot that I've sacrificed IQ for better fun and build power. Perfect option for me would be a headhunter with 5% IQ implicit. Because of the grids embrace minus 20% movement speed and poor 10% movement speed on the boots, I try to get some more of it wherever it's possible, so I'm using Cinder Swallow Urn with a movement speed veiled mod and the flask itself grants onslaught that has additional 20% movement speed which is not visible on the flask itself 
but you can see it on the tooltip. Second flask is the Quicksilver one, also for movement speed and it has bleed immunity suffix. Third flask is a divination distillate for IQ and IRR bonus. Never increase quality of this flask because you cannot make it back and it will decrease effectiveness of flask effect duration. It would just last shorter as it would regenerate more life and mana in the same amount of time and when it's fully regenerated the flask effect would end faster. Some players say that this flask can only work good with some special setups but I don't want to sacrifice too much to get more of its effect and even when it lasts only from time to time it's still very rewarding in my opinion. This flask also grants plus 6% to maximum resistances which temporarily makes them 81 81 81. Fourth flask is legacy version of the Wise Oak for 20% cold damage penetration because my uncapped cold resistance is the highest one and 10% less lightning damage taken because my lowest uncapped resistance is the lightning one. Last flask is the Bottled Faith. It gives a lot of damage and creates a very large AoE consecrated ground that also greatly helps to survive in hard situations. If you're using Bottled Faith, remember to Divine Orb the plus percent to Critical Strike Chance mod, which is a very strong mod. I use 3 large and 4 medium cluster jewels and 9 non-cluster jewels. That gives a total number of 16 jewels. Let's have a look at the clusters. Here's the first large cluster jewel. It has allocated Prismatic Heart for increased resistances and elemental damage and Vengeful Commander for increased effect of hatred. It's connected to Crit Strike Chance Medium Cluster Jewel, which has Precise Commander and Pressure Points allocated. Here are non-cluster jewels in this cluster. Second large cluster jewel has Vengeful Commander allocated and Blanketed Snow for permanent 10% cold penetration, because Ice Shot hits always chills enemies. It's connected to Crit Strike Chance Medium Cluster Jewel, which has Precise Commander allocated. Another Medium Cluster Jewel here is also the crit strike chance one with quick gateway allocated. Since this build has a lot of added damage, attack speed in this mod scales really good. 5% movement speed if dealt a crit strike recently is also nice. There are also two non-cluster jewels here. Third large cluster jewel has prismatic heart and snowstorm allocated. It's connected to medium increased effect of non-damaging elements medium cluster jewel, which has blast freeze notable that spreads inflicted freezes to other enemies and a very important notable storm rider, which is a new power charge source in this build after the herald of ice plus curse on hit combo nerf that cannot apply assassin's mark anymore. You can change other notables in clusters setup, but you absolutely should have storm rider. Here are two non-cluster jewels in this cluster. And here are three remaining non-cluster jewels in the skill tree. Now let's have a look at the skill tree. On the skill tree I try to get as much life as I can. Other important thing, like I've mentioned before, is movement speed. So I have Fleetfoot, Quick Step and Quick Gateway allocated. Another important notable is Fangs of Frost that grants 8% cold penetration. 30% increased cold damage and 10% increased effect of chill that helps with slowing down bosses same as Hypothermia gem. My ascendancy is Deadeye. There was a Deadeye ascendancy tree change at 3.13 and here's the new tree setup. It has Gathering Winds for permanent Tailwind that gives increased action speed which technically is increased attack and movement speed, Ricochet for plus one chain which after the new changes can now also chain when colliding with terrain, Endless Munitions for plus 2 projectiles and Far Shot that mitigates the point blank penalty with long range attacks and now also makes that barrage attacks have no spread which is a great change. My Pantheon remains unchanged, it's Soul of Lunaris as a major god mainly for physical damage reduction which is a weak point of this build and Soul of Shakari as a minor god for poison mitigation. Bandit's quest status is Help Alira for additional 15% to all elemental resistances and a nice 20% crit strike multiplier. Here are my skills and aura setups. There wasn't too many changes compared to the previous version, only the Herald of Ice combo was changed and some of the normal quality gems were replaced with the alternate quality or awakened ones. Main 6 link skill for map clearing is Ice Shot connected to Awakened Greater Multiple Projectiles, Awakened Elemental Damage with Attacks, Awakened Added Cold Damage, 
Note that the Awakened version of this gem at level 5 gives plus 1 to active cold skill gems, which is the Ice Shot gem in this case, so it's a really good synergy. Next gem is increased item quantity. Last gem is Divergent Hypothermia. The Divergent version lowers enemy's cold resistance by 0.2% per 1% of quality. This gem works very well with Ice Shot, because this skill always chills enemies, so I'm getting the permanent massive more damage bonus from it. And more damage mod is really good, because it scales way better than the increased damage mod. Secondary 6 link is for single target monsters and bosses, and it's basically almost the same gem setup as the first 6 link, but the only difference is barrage support gem instead of awakened greater multiple projectiles. Note that this is a barrage support gem, not the barrage skill gem, which is a whole different thing and I don't use it. Hypofirmia gem works great here because of its increased effect of chill, which really helps with slowing down and over leeching bosses. Same as in mapping gem setup, it's divergent alternate quality version for enemies lowered cold resistance. There's a change here, now Curse on Hit has changed its name for Hextouch and it can no longer apply marks, which in this build was Assassin's Mark. Because of that I've replaced Assassin's Mark with Elemental Weakness Hex Curse and the new power charges source now is like I've mentioned before Storm Rider on one of the cluster jewels. Even though the fact that I have the awakened version of Hex Touch, which lets me apply additional curse, I don't have two curses there because I don't wanna drop IQ gem for quantity bonus from Herald Shutters. My other auras are Anomalous Hatred and Divergent Precision, connected with Enlightened Level 4 for less mana reserved so I can level up the Precision Aura to level 13 without any mana problems. The Anomalous version of Hatred gives 10% increased chill and freeze duration and Divergent quality version of Precision gives 2% increased damage. Movement skill was changed from Blink Arrow to Dash and it doesn't have any support gems because of no free sockets. It feels better than Blink Arrow and it has lower cooldown recovery time so it can be used more often now. My defensive skill is Steel Skin level 17, triggered by Anomalous Cast When Damage Taken level 13. The Anomalous version of Cast When Damage Taken gives 20% increased skill effect duration. It's also supported by increased duration gem. You can change these gems levels, but keep in mind that the level requirements of them must match, so the skill trigger is possible. If you mismatch them, the steel skin won't trigger at all. My offensive damage buff is Val Haste, and I really recommend using it, because it increases both damage and movement speed. Note that I don't use normal haste aura, which would reserve mana, and I'm only using the temporary Val version when I catch enough Val souls to activate it. It really helps with bosses and also with faster mapping. Both of these defensive and offensive skills are connected to the same increased duration support gem. My mapping skill GMP setup tooltip shows 135k, 736 damage, and with all flask active it shows 161k, 484. On the single target barrage support setup it shows 48k, 661 damage, and with flask active it's 58k, 159. Keep in mind that Hypothermia support gem does not cause any damage increase on the tooltip and more damage against shield enemies is a really big damage boost. In-game tooltips are not always accurate and sometimes they just don't show all the stats, so I recommend you to rather check your build in Path of Building program than in the in-game tooltips. Critical Strike Chance is 77.63 and with Power Charges it's 91.31. My resistances are 75, 75, 75, and with all flasks up, they are 81, 81, 81. Physical damage reduction is only 3%, chance to evade attacks is 20%, chance to dodge attacks is 30%, and life pool is 5k 100 with fertile catalyst applied on all of the jewelry, amulet, rings, and belt. If you don't feel too strong with this build, just swap some of the IAQ items for normal items until you can improve it with some better tree jewels or other gear, because otherwise you can struggle and map clearing can be too slow and too painful. I'm gonna show some highlights from good drops made with this character. Path of building paste bin and forum thread with written version of this guide is in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one!